Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. So for my first project, I am going to take this wooden canvas. I think that's what they called it, a wooden canvas that I picked up at Dollar Tree. And I am going to give it a complete cover of this chalk paint. This paint is from Bluestone House. I got it at Home Hardware. I've had this jar for a couple of years and I think it's bottomless. The color is linen and it is a creamy white with kind of a greenish undertone, but it's going to be perfect for this project. So yeah, I had to get all the paint that was off the plastic. I put a sheet of plastic over the top of the jar when I put the lid back on. That keeps the lid from sticking. Honestly, if I didn't do that, I'd probably never get the lid back off. So I'm going to give the, just the inside of this tray, I'm going to call it a tray now because I'm using the bottom of it. And that's what I'm trying to make is a tray. I'm just going to give it one coat of this paint. I think that's all it's going to need. Now I'm going to mix a little bit of brown paint from Dollarama in with some water and use it like a stain for the frame. So I'm just going to put one coat on and I'll let that soak in and see if it's enough. And once I get the frame of this painted, I am going to take these dowels from the Dollarama as well. These dowels are awesome to work with. I'm going to cut them to size and I'm going to give them each a nice coat of this stain as well. And I'm just going to keep going over the stain, um, adding more until I'm happy with the color. Okay, so I'm going to start in this corner and I'm going to Mod Podge down my napkin picture that I chose. So this napkin I've used all but this corner now. Um, and this little bit right here. I save every bit of a napkin that I don't use. And I am going to Mod Podge this like this onto this tray. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is separate. There's two pieces there and one piece there. So I'm going to take the two pieces off the back. And I am going to start on the right hand side because it's easier for me to go from left to right because I'm right handed. So I'm going to start on the left. Did I say the right hand side? The left hand side. And I'm just going to use regular Mod Podge. I'm going to put it in here and I am going to add a little bit of water, just a little bit, to thin this out so that it's more like a napkin Mod Podge. And that's the only difference that I have found between a napkin Mod Podge and the regular um, Mod Podge, or I guess a napkin decoupage medium, is that it's a little thinner. So that looks good. It's about the consistency of milk. And I'm gonna start with a soft, soft brush. This is a one inch, really soft brush. And I am going to Mod Podge this napkin to the tray. Now, if I was just gonna be using this for a table tray, I would probably um, use this, I would probably use a different pattern <laughs> to start with. But this is an egg collecting tray. I, my, my, um, inspiration was a Pinterest picture that I found. I never did go and look at the site. So sorry to whoever posted this, but I never did go to the site. I just kind of took it as inspiration, which I'm sure a lot of pictures are meant to be. And I don't even know if there was a tutorial on that or not. You could probably go to Pinterest and find this picture and see 
but I just use Pinterest mostly for inspiration. So I have that on there really good. There's a few little wrinkles and I am going to use a piece of cellophane wrap. And I am going to just put it over this. I just ripped off a piece big enough to go on this tray. So I'm going to put it on here, smooth it out, <laughs> smooth this out, and then use it. And then I'm just going to go over top of this and press down to get out any big wrinkles. So if you're careful doing this, you can get out the larger wrinkles without tearing. You can't rub on this napkin at all once it is wet because it's just too delicate. So I don't see any big wrinkles in this. Maybe a little bit right there. I'm just going to press that down there. I think that looks good. So that's that one. I'm going to take this corner, which I've already removed the back from, and I'm going to go into this corner down here. And then I'm going to cut this little chick off of here because it kind of goes over top of that. And it's going to, it's really going to show is what's going to happen. It's going to show if it goes over top. So I'm going to cut that little chick off. And then put this like this, just to fill in a little bit of space there. I don't even think I need cling wrap for this. I think that'll be lots right there. Okay, then I'm going to let this dry before I go on to the next step. Do I want to take this little chick? And just put it up here, maybe. Like this. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna put it up here. I'm gonna put it up there. Okay, so for the next part of this tray, I want to glue these dowels that I pre-cut and stained into. A tray like this. I know it obscures part of the print in the bottom, but it's still cute. And remember, this is going to get filled up with eggs. So before I do that, and now to do put these on, I've actually measured, pre-measured little spots on the side rail here so that I can get these as straight as I'm going to be able to get them. So between each one of these little dots, I am going to just use a permanent marker. And I am going to, I think what I'm going to do first is take my ruler. And I'm going to take my pencil. And I'm just going to, I'm going to draw a line, a really faint little line across here so that I can get all of my letters the same size or thereabouts, because I'm gonna do them by hand. And I'm just going to put the days of the week in here. So starting on my line and in the middle of where my first dot is, I'm going to put an M for Monday. And then in the middle of this one, I'm going to do, and that's all I'm going to do. And then my S's never look the same two in a row, so... Let's see what I can do here. I guess close enough. I just want this to be simple. 
Now, I have my glue gun heated up. Let's put a glue stick on the end here. I just glued another glue stick on the end so I wouldn't have to stop and do that part way through. But to put my dowels down, now some of the one side of this tray was just a hair shorter than the other side. So let me put these in here again to make sure that they're gonna fit. Now, oh, this one had to go there, there, that works. So to get these to stay in place and not come off again, I'm using clear Gorilla Glue. And I'm just going to take my dowel and I'm just going to put a little bead of the clear Gorilla Glue. Just a couple of spots right down on the top of this, like this. And then I'm going to take my hot glue and I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue there, a little bit there. And I'm going to turn this over, put it on that dot, line it up with this dot and press it down and that should let's hold that for a minute there there i think that's okay that should stay now i'm noticing it's making contact more in the middle of this See? there so to hold it down a little bit let's do this one so this side there's a teeny tiny curve you can hardly see it on this so I'm going to put like that And like that and then I'm gonna put this like that and then making sure that that glue is down I'm gonna line this up with that line and that line like that and that's what I'm gonna do with each one of these Okay, I'm going, these are all stuck in the middle, but the ends are not quite stuck down. That's where the wet glue is. So I'm going to find something really heavy to lay across here and hold those down until they're dry. Okay, so for project number two, I'm going to use this board that I got from my local Kent building supply store. And they sell these as cutoffs. They are one inch pine and they are 12 inches wide and 24 inches long. I buy them for all kinds of things. They are absolutely amazing and they only charge $2.99 for them. So, yes, $3 for a nice big piece of solid wood like this that's an amazing price so I've just sanded the edges they these are pre-cut at the store and I sanded the edges down so there were no rough bits wiped it off with a dust cloth and I'm just going to give this a coat of the same paint that I used in the egg tray so this board is good and dry 
And I am going to use this stencil and try to stencil on here with just some paint. Now I'm gonna mix a little bit more of this up. I use this for something else, but I'm just gonna give this a quick shake. So this is kind of a DIY chalk paint, guys. And all I do to make this is I'll, I'll put whatever color acrylic paint I want in here. I'm gonna put a little bit in there because I'll just cover it with some plastic and keep it because I got a few more things to do. And then I'm going to take this baby powder from the dollar store and ordinary baby powder doesn't work unless you check it. If the ingredient is talc, if it's talc, it will work. If it's not talc, it doesn't. So I put a good little amount of talc in here like this in the paint and then this is going to make it quite thick but it does dissolve in here pretty good and I am just going to stir this up with a little uh, stir stick. So stir it up until you don't have any lumps left. Make sure you get it mixed in there really, really well. And this is going to create like a homemade chalk paint. So because I'm just making this sign, I'm just gonna, I wanna hang this on the barn door, on the chicken coop door. And it says, Rise and Shine Mother Cluckers, this one. And it's for my son's little um, homestead and he has chickens. And then this says fresh eggs and there's a chicken and a bit of a thing, but it says farm fresh, but I'm not going to use the farm part. I'm just gonna use the fresh eggs part. So to do that, I, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just centering this and just eyeballing it and centering this and I'm gonna tape it down There, like that. Make sure it kind of looks straight. There. And then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take this rag that I've been using, and I am going to put a little bit of paint on here. I just want a little on this stenciling brush, and then I'm just going to pounce up and down like this. So I think I'm going to start there, just like that. No brushing because I don't want this to seep underneath. Okay, so I've got that on there. Okay, so then I'm going to put this stencil down at the bottom here. Okay, so I'm gonna put it down here and I'm not gonna stencil farm in. I'm just going to do the fresh eggs. Okay, I've let that set and dry quite a while now. And now I'm going to take some more of this same paint and a small paintbrush, and I'm just gonna write, we want. So the whole sign is gonna say, rise and shine, mother cluckers, we want fresh eggs. 
And once I have that on there, I'm just going to use this little paintbrush while I have it out. And I'm going to fill in all those little blank spaces that are left by the stencil and make it make it look more like this has been painted on here instead of stenciled. And sometimes it's easier when you're painting freehand to add a little bit more water to your paint because a little bit thinner paint is easier to brush on with a fine paintbrush. So I'm even going around parts of the chickens, parts of this um, half wreath type of leaf pattern that's on here and even the little berries at the bottom. I'm, I'm just filling in any place that I think it looks a little bit off. So don't be afraid to play around with these stencils when you use them and make them your own. Like absolutely, this is your project, so make it your own. And one of the ways that I like to do that on a lot of my paper crafting projects, on my wood signs, a lot of the things is by just adding stitching around the outside edge. In this case, I'm just using a black permanent marker because it's so much easier and faster. And then I only have one thing left. I want to put a sun at the top of this. So, yeah, simple, simple, simple. Look at the difference just doing that little bit makes. So I put it on there with the black marker, but I did finish it off with the paint so that it would look more like it belonged with the rest of the sign. So it's done. And how cute is this going to look on the chicken coop door? This is what we're going to see every morning when we go out to feed the chickens, collect the eggs. And those girls make us happy every single morning so i love this project there i just want to do a little bit of follow-up on the first project this is what it looks like so you can just put the eggs in each column as you bring them in each day and that way as you're using your eggs off your countertop you're always using them in the right order so you're not leaving any stale eggs behind also i did a little bit of an addition to this project i added two beads at the top and one bead at the bottom on each side so that it would sit just a little bit higher at the top than the bottom and the eggs would stay down here instead of rolling back and forth and it also looks way cuter on the countertop so i really do hope you enjoyed both of these projects if you did please give my video a thumbs up and by all means share with your friends if you think there's something here that they would enjoy don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I'll see everybody in the next video.